Around the World in 80 Days, Part 9. As the last lap towards completing Mr. Fox's wager approached, he was more and more satisfied with his journey. What are you thinking, Mr. Fox? I am starting to admire the sheer ingeniousness of this whole journey, Princess. It is true that if I win this wager, I would be the president of the Reform Club. But I have also come to appreciate our journey in itself. It is all coming together now. My wager, betting my wealth and everything I have earned. <sighs> Meeting you. True, Mr. Fogg. Everything happens for a reason. Monsieur! Monsieur! We have reached San Francisco! Of course. I hope we have. USA is, after all, our last stop before Europe. I am a little afraid now, Monsieur. As our journey is ending, I am getting more and more anxious. That's true. But don't forget, Passapatu, we have Yoman's sword to protect us. As long as he's here, nothing could go wrong. Oui, Monsieur. But who shall protect you from the arrow of love? <coughs> Focus, Passapartu. We have a wager to complete. Oh, yes. The wager of... love. <laughs> Passapartu was thrilled to see San Francisco. The wide streets, the beautiful, evenly ranged houses, the horse cars, omnibuses, the great docks. While Passapartu reveled in the scenery outside, the trust between Mr. Fogg and Mira was growing. See, si, monsieur? Such tall buildings! But how much ever happy the trio was at San Francisco! There was someone in Europe who was losing their patience. Ah! It's been weeks since that Inspector Fix has contacted me. To top it off, Fog has reached the USA. How do you know that? Don't you read news? That good-for-nothing Fog is everywhere! All the major publications in Europe are covering his journey. Look at this. Oh, Fogg is famous. Yes, but not for long. I was never just dependent on that fix. I have many contacts all around the world. I have already made arrangements. You see, I have a friend in the USA who will send a gift to Fogg any time now. A gift? I thought you were on my team, Arthur. You're now sending that Fogg gifts. <sighs> Mr. Fogg and Princess Mira were increasingly getting closer. Mr. Fogg always thought that anybody outside of science would find his work boring and difficult to understand. But Princess Mira was an intelligent woman. Mr. Phyllis Fogg. Yes, please. How do you know my name? I have a parcel for you, sire. A gift, rather. Parcel for me? Here? Well, sire, you're famous. People are placing wagers on your journey. A wager? On a wager? That's a durable wager, monsieur. <laughs> yeah, it is. This is a very special dessert, which is only found in San Francisco. We're not sure when you shall be back here, so please honor us and accept our gift. Mr. Fogg was always cautious about accepting gifts from strangers. Very well, sir. I shall accept this pie and eat it when I feel a little empty in my stomach, if you don't mind. You see, we've just had our lunch. From there, the strange man immediately made a phone call to Europe. The eagle has landed. Eagle? No, no, no. It was a pie that you were supposed to deliver, not an eagle. A pie that will make Fogg lose his senses for a good 48 hours. He will be in Europe in no time. We have to stop him from finishing his wager. What eagle are you talking about, and where has it landed, and why are you telling me about it? Are you out of your mind, Tubby? Did you taste the pie? <sighs> Sorry, that's just a saying. I meant that the pie has landed in the hands of Phileas Fogg. Oh, that means the eagle is the pie and Fogg's hands are the branches where it has landed. Oh, good, good. 
Bye bye, Tubby. <sighs> Miss you, I am hungry and I can certainly do with a little bye. We must be careful, Passapartout. It is better that we don't make any mistakes till we reach Europe. The steamer for Europe has docked. We must get going. But Passapartout wasn't listening. His hunger got the better of him. Well, I am sure just a little won't do any wrong. Mr. Fogg, where did Passapartout go? The steamer to Europe will leave any minute. I am the council of this steamer, and it shall not go anywhere without the great man of France. Huh? huh? Monsieur Fogg, I must say you are an honorable man. You must certainly tell Princess Mira that you are in love with her. What? Ah. <laughs> Passepartout has probably eaten the pie, <clears throat> and it clearly had something in it. He is not making any sense. <laughs> oh, please, Princess Mira, tell him you love him back. What? Ah, <laughs> uh, uh, you, you are not sensing any make. I mean, making any sense. <laughs> We must make sure that Passepartout doesn't leave our sight, Princess. Ah! That is going to be a little difficult, Mr. Fogg. I will rule the world. Oh, heavens, please don't say that. I cannot have people chasing us again. With eight hours to end day 80, in the dark of Europe's skies, the steamer pulled up at the Liverpool dock. Passepatu, who was now rested and all fine, got down the steamer with Princess and Mr. Fogg, who were holding hands. Passepatu's little charade had only made them accept their love for each other, but their problems were far from over. Arrested! Monsieur! Mr. Fogg! You thief! I finally found you! You thought you can evade the clutches of law. How dare you talk to Mr. Fogg in that tone? We are in a hurry. Do not try to stop us. He has to reach London in eight hours to finish his wager. Oh, yada, yada, yada. Enough with the lies. You are all accomplices to this, and I, in the name of the Queen, am arresting you, too. You are making a mistake. Kindly come with me to London, and you shall see for yourself. I have already traveled almost the world to catch you, Fogg. I'm not buying your lies anymore. Mr. Fogg, Passepatu, and Princess were put in English prison. Something that never could have been imagined had happened. As Mr. Fogg looked at his watch, he realized... <sighs> he had lost the wager. Monsieur, I'm sure this is a plot against you. It doesn't matter, Passepartout. I have lost my prestige at the Reform Club. I have lost my house, my inventions, and I have lost half my wealth. <sighs> On the 81st day, in the early morning, Inspector Fix approached Mr. Fogg in prison. <clears throat> I... I seem to have made a mistake. The thief of the London Bank is caught. <sighs> I am so sorry, Mr. Phileas Fogg. I have nothing to say to you, Inspector. You were blinded with your anger towards me. You are answerable to your duty now, not me. <sighs> and as soon as they were out of the prison, Princess Mira realized something. Passapatu, show me your watch. Yes, your watch is behind. <sighs> No, Princess. How many times do I have to repeat? This is an ancestral watch. And That's not what I mean. Mr. Fogg, Passapatu never adjusted his watch, as per the international timings. So his watch is still in London time. And as per my understanding, we are still in the morning of the 80th day. What does this mean, Princess? This means that we had reached Liverpool on the 79th day as per London time. I have been adjusting my watch throughout, and I must have missed some hours. 
Today is not the 81st day. It is the 80th. So we still have eight hours to reach London till three o'clock. Passapatu didn't understand a word of what was being said. All he understood was... So, my watch is right? <laughs> oh, Passapatu, let go. I will explain you on the way. Back in London, the Reform Club was full of people waiting for Mr. Falk to return or not return. Gosh, can't I can't believe it. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> it is just four hours to three. And where is Mr. Phileas Fogg? He will lose the wager for sure. <laughs> and the countdown began. My dear fellows of London, I feel sorry for the loss of those who wagered on Phileas Fogg's victory. And congratulations for those who wagered on his defeat. Ten seconds to go. Oh. Ten. Nine. Eight. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. I can't believe it. Ten seconds. Five. Four. Three. Huh? And one. <gasps> oh. Phileas Fogg is the first man to travel around the world in 80 days. Yay! <laughs> no! <sighs> London was thrilled. History had been made. A man had traveled around the world in 80 days. Phileas Fogg was greeted with excitement and pride and happy tears. Even those who had lost their wager were happy, since now the name of their town would be etched in history. Phileas, oh my boy, come and take your rightful place. Phileas Fogg was made the president of the Reform Club with immediate effect. And once everyone found out about the evil plans of Arthur and Greenwick, they were asked to leave the club. Phileas Fogg, over time, changed the way the Reform Club looked and thought. Investors around the world began to invest for inventions of the Reform Club, showing faith in Phileas Fogg. Phileas Fogg had a new family now. He always kept his friends and his partner for life close and became successful. Around the world in 80 days came to an end. But the adventurous and fantastic journey of Phileas Fogg's life had only just begun.